If you've paid attention to anything technology-related recently, you've probably seen headlines like these. Antitrust regulation is gaining a lot of traction in the media, as well as in the Department of Justice. But in general, we've started to see what has been broadly termed a, a tech latch. A lot, of, a lot of concern about the role of technology, as well as the size of these companies and the impact that they may be having on individuals and society. Since May 2019, the DOJ has opened antitrust probes into the likes of Apple, Google, and Facebook. The last major antitrust action against a major company occurred more than two decades ago. Remember Internet Explorer? Microsoft's browser has since been eclipsed by the likes of Google's Chrome and Apple's Safari. But it was once so powerful, the federal government had to step in. Here's what happened. In 1994, Microsoft was on top of the blossoming tech industry. Its operating system was fast becoming the go-to software for professionals and casual computer users alike. But if you wanted to get on the internet in the early 90s, you were using this. The Netscape Navigator, software which makes it easy for people to connect the global computer network called the internet. Netscape Navigator was the king of web browsers at the time. But there was a downside. You had to pay $49 to install Netscape on your computer, the equivalent to about $85 today. You could also choose from AOL or Prodigy, but those cost $9.95 a month. But these options were still light years ahead of Microsoft at the time. Microsoft didn't even have internet connectivity built into its software until the mid-90s. But the new wave of popularity surrounding Navigator was reason enough for Microsoft CEO Bill Gates to pen a letter to the company in 1995 titled the Internet Tidal Wave. With this document, Gates laid out his vision of the internet. He wanted Microsoft's development teams to, quote, go overboard on internet features. Gates also laid out seven broad examples of the ways the company could conquer the internet. One specific example, Microsoft needed a web browser. Fast forward to the second half of 1995, and Microsoft released its brand new Windows 95 operating system, as well as Internet Explorer 1.0. But they were separate. They weren't bundled until 1996, as part of Windows' first major update. And this changed the game for Microsoft. It was a new way to get online without any extra installation. It came with the operating system. And best of all, Microsoft had the advantage of being a massive company that could offer its software for free. And it was a massive success. In just over a year, Microsoft gained 10% market share. This, of course, sent other companies' revenues plummeting. But IE's success might not have been purely from the popularity of Windows. Allegations that Microsoft began making it incredibly difficult to install other web browsers began to surface. The allegations were enough to spark a DOJ antitrust probe into Microsoft in 1998. The antitrust case against Microsoft was a bit different to how the law was used in the past. Before, cases were based on one central issue. Was a dominant company charging super high prices without anyone to compete with. But this case changed that. The DOJ argued that Microsoft stifled competition by using its sheer size to barge into the browser wars. It could offer Internet Explorer for free, included in the OS, and Netscape would be cut out of the business from the very first time the computer was turned on. If you suppress your competitors' innovation and you're the only game in town and you keep suppressing innovation, surely that's a harm to competition. In fact, it's one of the biggest harms to competition. And it's been known in the economic field for all these years that suppressing innovation is even worse than raising price because you're preventing the progressive movement of the markets. On top of that, if a person wanted to install Netscape on the computer, Microsoft allegedly made it incredibly difficult to do so. Microsoft, on the other hand, argued that people chose to use its operating system because it was simply better than the competition. But Microsoft lost. The court ruled that the company had to split its software and operating system divisions in order to abide by antitrust regulation. At least at first. That decision was later thrown out in appeals court, right as the Bush administration settled into the White House. By the time a settlement had been reached in 2001, Microsoft's position in the browser wars was already being eaten away by competition from the likes of Mozilla Firefox, an offshoot of Netscape. Internet Explorer wasn't the only antitrust battle that Microsoft faced. Novell was a company specializing in network computing and software in the early 80s and 90s. 
the company was also known for its word processing software, WordPerfect. The company complained in 2004 that Microsoft intentionally made it difficult to install its software, just like it did with IE. But Novell's case spent a decade bouncing around the courts. Unlike the United States versus Microsoft case that came before it, Novell lost. An appeals court said that Microsoft's actions didn't constitute antitrust behavior, and the Supreme Court declined to take up the case in 2014. Those two cases are really in great tension with each other. Uh, because the U.S. against Microsoft has, I would say, the opposite point of view, that a firm with market power does have a duty to deal fairly and not anti-competitively with those who want to use its platform. Novell was acquired in 2014, and by then had left the word processing business. It's unclear whether an antitrust case brought against tech giants today would rule in the same vein as United States versus Microsoft, or more like Novell versus Microsoft. If U.S. against Microsoft is giving credence above Novell against Microsoft, it has a lot to say on controlling the almost unaccountable power of the big tech firms. Accusations that Apple's App Store stifle competition resemble arguments that Microsoft prevented downloads of other applications, and Google Chrome is now the king of internet browsers. Big tech companies are also swallowing up startups and smaller firms left and right. The tech world has become a winner-take-all affair. Tech mergers have faced particular scrutiny, especially in congressional hearings. When a company owns four of the largest six entities measured by active users, we have a word for that, and that's monopoly, or, or at least monopoly power. But big tech executives might beg to differ. We face intense competition for all of the products and services that we provide. To name a few examples, Twitter, Snapchat, iMessage, Skype, Telegram, Google, YouTube, and Amazon offer photo and video sharing, messaging, advertising, and other services that compete with Facebook. There's also concern that antitrust regulation remains too broad to tackle tech's problems. Antitrust is a sledgehammer where even if you have some concerns about specific policy issues such as privacy, what you really need is more of a scalpel. So it is this very powerful tool and breaking up could result in things like breaking up teams that make innovation more difficult. So as Congress, the public, and big tech itself start calling for more regulation, Microsoft's past antitrust troubles could hint at what's ahead.